Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 5-3, Graphs of Inverse Functions, Part 2. We begin by looking at the horizontal line test for inverse functions. That a function f has an inverse if and only if no horizontal line that we would pass along the graph up and down. If it ever intersects the graph of f at more than one point, then it's not going to pass the horizontal line test, and that means that it's not going to have an inverse. What kind of functions don't pass the horizontal line test that don't have inverses? If a fu function is one to one, it's going to pass. If it's not one to one, it's not going to pass because a function is one to one when each value of the dependent variable, that would be y or f of x, corresponds to exactly one value of the independent variable x. So if two different x values produce the same y coordinate, it's not going to be one to one. It's not going to pass the horizontal line test. And so it's not going to have a function. It's not going it's not, inverse is, it's not going to have an inverse. So example number one, we're going to take a look at some graphs that we're very familiar with. It just says sketch. So we don't have to be exact on points, just kind of get the right idea and the shape for each of these. And based on the graph, can we determine if it's one to one? So f of x equals x squared. We should know what that looks like. So we want to do a quick sketch of f of x equals x squared. This comes back from unit two quadratic functions. And it looks something like that. So the question is, would that pass a horizontal line test? If we pass a horizontal line, would it hit zero or one points at all places? Like zero, zero, one. Oh no, right through here, it's gonna hit more than one point. So it fails the test. It is not one to one. What about x to the third as a function? g of x equals x to the third. What does that look like? This is unit three. It looked like that going up the page. So passing horizontal line, it's one point, one point, one point, one point, one point. Everywhere we move our horizontal line, it's always going to hit at one point. And that's okay, so it does pass. The horizontal line test, meaning the function is one to one. And h of x cube root of x from unit four, or that's the one that goes to the sides, cube root, not square root, square root looks like this. Cube root goes quadrants four and one, I'm sorry, three and one. And so anywhere we pass a uh, horizontal line is going to hit at one point, so that one also passes. Example number two, is the function one to one? If not, then restrict the domain, basically change the domain so that it will pass the test. Find the inverse graph both, restrict the domain of the inverse if necessary. So we start with f of x equals the cube root of x minus 2. To determine 1 to 1, let's go ahead and just graph this. Not just a sketch, actual graph with the correct number of key points. So we have our normal cube root function that we just looked at with a transformation with the minus 2, meaning shift down 2. So we're going to start with our inflection point here. And we know with an a value of 1, that that's going to mean right one up one, left one down one. And cube root goes out to the sides. So we know that's going to determine the shape going to the sides. So bending here, changing the direction of the bend here. So is it 1 to 1? Well, if we thought about passing a horizontal line, up and down, it's never going to hit more than one point, so we're okay, we pass. And if it's yes, we don't have to restrict the domain. The full domain is good, we don't need that part. 
Right. Let's go find the inverse. So four step process, y equals, then switch the x and the y. Now we solve for y. The, y. the minus 2 being outside the function means we can undo the minus 2. Let's add 2 to both sides. And to undo or inverse of cube root, we will now cube both sides. And that is going to involve having to have parentheses because all of that x plus 2 does get cubed. And now let's turn that into function notation, f inverse of x is equal to x plus 2 quantity cubed. And let's graph that. So normally x cubed, the parent function, has an inflection point at the origin. We're going to do a transformation. We're going to shift left 2. So we're going to start right there with an a value of 1. So up one, right one, left one, down one. But this time, with it being x cubed parent function, it's not going to go to the side. It's going to go up. So we're bending this way. We're bending this way. There we are. So the question is, as inverses should be, are these exact in, uh, reflections of each other in this line y equals x? Yes, they are. They're mirror images. So if they are, we don't need to make any modifications. We don't need to restrict the domain of the inverse function. So we don't need to bother with that. These are, in fact, true inverses. So that's part A. Part B, same thing, same steps, different function, g of x equals x plus 3 squared. So to determine if it's 1 to 1, let's graph the original function first. x plus 3 squared, quadratic parabola with the transformation left 3. So left 3, and it's a parabola. Usually we go with five points, but we're just kind of sticking to three points here because we can kind of get the idea of the shape, which would be right there. Now, is it one to one? Well, let's try a, a horizontal line. No points, no points. One point. Oh, here, we come across here, we're going to hit at two points. So it's not one to one. So we're going to need to restrict the domain. We're going to see how do we modify this graph so that it's going to pass that horizontal line test. And the way we do it with the parabola is we just cut the parabola in half and get rid of half of it. So we're going to cut it right down the middle, right through what would have been the axis of symmetry. And it's usually the left side, which is get rid of that. So we just remove or erase the whole left side of the parabola. Now, if we the horizontal line, it's going to now pass. It's one point, one point, one point. It now passes. So in order to get it to pass, we needed to restrict the domain. So what did we do? We removed this part. Well, what do we have left? We have starting at x is negative 3 and going to the right. So we would say that our restricted domain is x is greater than or equal to the negative 3, that point right there. Since we got rid of the left stuff, it's everything to the right of and at negative 3. So that's our restricted domain. All right, let's go ahead and find the inverse. So y equals and switch the x and the y. Now we got to solve for y. Now we can't get can't undo the plus 3 because it's buried inside here. So we're going to have to undo the square ring. We're going to square root both sides right away. Then we'll subtract the 3. Make sure it happens outside of the square root. So when we do the square root, the bar ends at the x, and the minus 3 is not under the bar. 
And now we'll rewrite that as g inverse of x. And we should be able to graph this. Back from unit four, square root graph. Remember what that looked like. But shifted down three. So remember, this has an initial point, a starting point, usually the origin, but we're going to shift that down three to start. And then usually we went right one up one, right three up one, but we really just need these kind. And it does square root graphs bend like this. So question, as we ponder, do we need to restrict the domain of this? Are these reflections, exact reflections of each other in this line? Are they mirror images? Yes, they are. So we don't need to restrict anything about that. That is the function does need to be restricted. Example number two, part C. H of x equals square root of x minus 4. Is it 1 to 1? Oh, well, let's check it out. Let's graph it. We just kind of saw what a square root graph should look like normally starting here. But we are going to shift it. That's our transformation. Four units. Which way? It's inside with the x, and that's where we think opposite. So we're going to go right four. Right four, it's a square root graph. Right one up one, right three up one if you wanted to get more points. And it's gonna bend like that. All right. Is that one to one? If I pass a horizontal line test, zero, zero, we hit once, one, 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 one. Never more than one, so yes, it does pass one to one. So we don't have to do any restricting of domain here for h of x. Let's go find the inverse. So y equals switch the x and the y. Now we got to solve for y. Can't undo the minus 4. It's buried inside of the function. Let's get rid of square root. Square both sides. Now we can undo the minus 4. We can add 4 to both sides. There it is. Here's our inverse function. Probably should say h inverse of x. All right, so let's go ahead and graph that. X squared, oh, that's unit two, quadratic functions, parabola. Parabola, normal parabola, here's our transformation. What does the K do to it? It shifts it up four. So here's gonna be our vertex, parabola, there we go. And draw in the parabola. All right, so do we need to restrict the domain there? Well, let's take a look at what we've got from h of x and inverse. Are they exact reflections of each other in this line? I don't think they are. This point reflects to there. This point reflects to there. This point would reflect. We don't have a point there. So there's no bottom part, so we can't have this part. This matches with that. That matches with that. We don't want this part we're going to need to restrict the domain. We're going to need to eliminate that, get rid of it. So if we got rid of it, we want to say, well, it's not all of this, because that would have been the full parabola. We want to say starting here at an x-coordinate of 0 and going to the right. So x is greater than or equal to 0. That's our x-coordinate there. That's the domain that matches this. We're saying actually h inverse of x is x squared plus 4, but x has to be greater than or equal to 0 to make them actual inverses. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.